Hello there, I'm Joseph, and today it is an absolutely gorgeous spring morning here in central Portugal on the mountainside. We're on the Gardunia mountain, and uh, that's my favourite mountain. Uh, of course, I'm somewhat biased because I live on the side of the Gardunia mountain. I'm actually on my neighbour's farm here, so I live about, about 50 metres that way. And uh, yeah, I love this place. I love it during the spring. It's, um, it's, it's completely white. It looks like it's snow covered. And uh, that is, of course, due to all of this beautiful cherry blossom that you can see here. There's a lot of peach blossom as well. The peach blossom is pink and the, uh, the cherry blossom here is all white. Uh, that's due to the varieties of cherry that they grow here. And it's absolutely gorgeous in the springtime. It's my favorite time of year here. And look at this behind me. It is absolutely gorgeous. You can see all of these beautiful, beautiful cherry trees. These ones here have all just been recently grafted. And you can see my dog Lily over there walking around, <laughs> looking at all the different bugs and things and smelling all the different things. Perhaps there's been a wild boar or something there in the night or, or maybe a, a stray dog or something that she's having a little smell of. But yeah, <laughs> this time of year is, is gorgeous. You've got all of this cherry blossom. And uh, of course, Fundau, it's sited on the foothills of the Gardunia Mountains. So it's just a few hundred meters down the mountain from us, a little bit north from us. And um, yeah, it's famous here for its cherries. Of course, you can see there's an awful lot of cherries grown here. My neighbour, uh, Jose, he, he is one of the biggest cherry producers in Portugal. He lets me walk my dogs through here all of the time. He's just about to come past us now, I think. In actual fact, I can see his vehicle in the distance. <laughs> and he's a lovely man. Bon dia. There he goes there, I just had to make way so he could uh, so he could drive past. <laughs> that was a couple of his work as an actual fact. And um, yeah, they grow so many cherries here. They don't have hundreds of hectares of cherries here, they have thousands of hectares. There's, uh, there's an awful lot of cherries to be picked. And of course they have to get a lot of pickers in to do it. And um, in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see here in all of these fields, it's going to be teeming with cherry pickers. It's gonna be fantastic. Of course, all the blossom is gonna drop. The blossom doesn't last for very long. It lasts for maybe maybe a week and a half, two weeks on the tree sort of thing. And then uh, that will all drop. The leaves are left behind. And of course, all of the little little tiny cherries that are, that are swelling and growing with all of the water they're getting in, this, in, the, in the lovely spring rains that we have. Maybe we can see some cherries here, I'm not sure. Not quite yet, I don't think there's. All the little buds are still there. They're being pollinated by the bees. There's a lot of bees buzzing around. And of course, uh, nearly everybody here has their own beehives. I've got three beehives. Uh, Jose here, he has beehives, but because he's got so many hectares of cherries, he moves them all around at different times of the year to do the different trees uh, so the bees can get fed and of course pollinate um, all of the different species of fruit that he keeps. Although his main trade is cherries, of course. But, um, but yeah, it's a fantastic place here. And um, yeah, this morning I'm going to do a little walk through the cherry orchards. And you might remember if you're a regular viewer that me and Mariana, my wife, we walked uh, through these cherry orchards just a couple of weeks ago. And of course the, uh, the cherry blossom hadn't started blooming at that point. Um, all these trees, they were still in their winter dormant stage and they just looked like uh, bare twigs uh, all in the ground, of course. But it's amazing how, um, how that nice rain that we had this spring uh, followed then, of course, by this lovely sunshine. It's amazing how it really does bring on those trees through the uh, through the spring season. And then as we uh, as we come up here, you can see, of course, there's Lily. <laughs> Lily, come on this way. You can see now that it's opened up. You've got a manure pile here, but in the distance, you've got um, the Serra de Estrella mountain. That is the uh, the biggest, the the tallest mountain on on mainland Portugal. It stands at 1,993 meters. So just under 2,000 meters. We've got a few of our neighboring villages here around as well. You've got a, a little village called Telhado over that way behind this lovely big cherry tree. We've got Covilha, which is a, a lovely big, uh, big city. It's the second, second largest city in our region here. And uh, if, you, if you saw the video uh, a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, when me and Mariana visited Covilha, come on, Lily. Get out of the manure. <laughs> Um, yeah, you would have seen that we, we bought some regional cheeses and things from there. If you haven't seen it, then click the link in the top right corner. And as we keep going that way, you can see in the distance there's Fundau. It's a lovely town. It's uh, somewhere I'm very, very passionate about. I'm a big, big fan of Fundau. 
best thing I ever done in my life was moving to central Portugal. So I'm a very, very big fan of Fundel. <laughs> and as, um, as I keep walking down this way, um, we're just getting deeper and deeper into cherry country here. There's, there's fields and fields and fields, orchards and orchards of cherry trees everywhere. And yeah, in a couple of weeks time, this is just going to be teeming with, with lots of little wooden ladders all hanging in the trees and, and lots of Portuguese people all singing away. Of course, I'm going to be there as well with Mariana and my family on our own orchard. We'll all be at the top of our ladders singing, singing traditional songs and, <laughs> and our fingers will start to hurt with all of the, uh, picking all of the cherries, but it's, um, it's lovely. It's really, really lovely. <laughs> And as we walk through the uh, through the cherry orchards of Jose here, you can see there's an awful lot of uh, new trees there that have just been recently grafted. So um, so that means uh, that they've taken taken cuttings from uh, from good producing new variety trees, uh, ones that ones that produce bigger cherries or sweeter cherries, and they um, and they stick them onto uh, onto an old uh, an old trunk or a wild cherry tree, and uh, they uh, they bandage them up and make sure that the, uh, the the cut is nice and clean and then uh, and then the cherry tree it takes with the uh, with the new variety onto it so it gets uh, better cherries newer cherries that sort of thing and as we uh, as we walk down the runs here uh, we head back down to my farm so we've done a nice loop now my uh, my dogs are very used to walking this uh, this track they they walk with me along here all the time uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're farm dogs they're very very used to running around farms and um, and as we were walking just over there there was a there was a big pile of uh, granite boulders there was a big lizard sitting on them I went to I went to take a picture of him but he uh, he ran away into the uh, into the crevices <laughs> and as we walk back here it is such a gorgeous gorgeous day the sun is shining it already feels like a summer's day in England where I'm from but um, but yeah of course the weather's gonna get somewhat somewhat hotter here in the next couple of months it's gonna raise about 20 degrees hotter than this Celsius and then you can see these uh, these buds here they haven't blossomed out yet they have on the other side there's a couple of flowers there but they're they're yet to yet to blossom so them flowers they haven't quite come out yet but as we uh, as we come up here you can see where some of the blossom has already fallen and some of the leaves are starting to come out not on that tree but maybe on this one <laughs> There you go. You can start to see the leaves are starting to sprout out already, and then, uh, and then in about a week or so, the uh, the the little the little uh, fruits, the little cherries, they're going to be starting to poke their heads out. So spring really has sprung here on the uh, on the Gardunia mountainside. It's um, it's absolutely beautiful. I think it's my favourite season of the year. But then again, I do say that every season. I say winter's my favourite and summer's my favourite. <laughs> they're all good for for different reasons, I guess. But yeah, now we're going to go back to my farm. And, uh, and take a little look at the uh, at the poultry, see what's going on there in the spring. Spring is a fantastic time for poultry. They all start to uh, start to lay their eggs and uh, and start to nest and everything. So we're going to go see what's happening there. And um, and yeah, take a look around my farm. Okay, me and Lily are now back on our farm and uh, yeah, we just come in the gateway there which leads right to the cherry orchard and uh, there's my, my gaggle of geese in the background there. I've got uh, six, six lovely geese, five greys and one white one and uh, they're absolutely beautiful. If you, if you have been a, a subscriber for a long time, then you rem might remember that we, um, that we had uh, two, little, two little goslings given to us last year. Well, they're, uh, they're part of the flock, of course, they're part of the gaggle. And um, and yeah, they're not so little anymore. They're quite big. They're just as big as the others. They're all adults now. And of course, when geese are adults, come springtime, they uh, they have their laying season. So we're about to uh, about to go into the uh, the outdoor part of the of the chicken run and see um, and see what the geese have been up to. Hey, Chooks. Watch out. So we've normally got um, quite a big poultry concern here on the farm. We've normally got up to about 200, uh, 200 chickens at a time. Uh, of course, we've got nowhere near that at the moment. You can see we've got uh, we've got quite a few chicken coops. This is just one of them. Uh, we've got uh, we've got one, two, three, four, 
five, six, about about six chicken coops all in this uh, all in this meadow here. This is the biggest one, and then all the others are a bit smaller. Um, and yeah, at the moment we've probably got about fifty chickens. Um, you'll you'll probably know already if you've uh, if you've been watching a while that that's because when Mariana was pregnant last year, she normally does all of the uh, the fluffy, cute stage of the chickens. She does all the incubating and and the brooding and whatnot. So um, so yeah, when she was pregnant, of course she couldn't do that. So um, so we we reduced our numbers of chickens down somewhat. But we're going to be uh, going to be increasing again this year, come spring. So yeah, so very shortly. And uh, and talking about increasing in size. Uh, as we come into the outdoor part of the chicken run here, I noticed there was a bit of a nest in the corner. Not the best place for a nest, but I guess the geese know best. They've got a one big goose egg. So you can see that's quite a bit bigger. I've not got small hands, I've got quite big hands. And this is uh, this is quite a big egg. So that's a, that's a goose egg there. And I can hear Mother Goose is, is coming round to double check what I'm doing. <laughs> There she is there, just coming round by the by the veg patch. She's coming to see why I'm tampering with her nest. Don't worry, I'm leaving it alone now. So um so what she'll do is she'll lay she'll lay an egg here, uh not not necessarily every day, but every day, every other day, uh for the next sort of uh 12 to 20 days. And um yeah, when she feels like she's got enough got enough eggs, which will probably be about about six to eight, something like that. Sometimes they try and sit on too many, they become a little bit ambitious. Uh, sometimes they don't try and sit on too many. But um, yeah, then she'll try and uh, try and hatch, and uh, the eggs can sit dormant for for a, a good couple of weeks like that until um, until the uh, the day comes when she decides to sit. Then she'll sit, and they'll all start the incubation process at the same time, and uh, and then after about uh, after about sort of five weeks, uh, you'll have uh, some little goslings. That is, of course, if you've got a male. We're not entirely sure if we've got a male. We did have a male. But uh, unfortunately, he died. That was a couple of years ago now. So, um, so I'm hoping that one of the uh, the goslings that we got last year is a male. It certainly looks like they are. When uh, when trying to sex geese, it's 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 not not the easiest animal in the world to sex. But um, you can sort of see the the females have much more of a slender neck and uh, slender legs as well. And the males tend to be uh, a little more on the stocky side. They tend to be a little bit more a little bit more fatter, a little bit a little bit more muscly. And as we look over here at my chickens. Uh, at my geese, sorry, as we look over here at the geese. If I had to guess, which I'm about to try, I would say this one here is a male. He's got quite a stocky neck, as you can see. And this one here was the one that was coming to see if I tampered with the uh, with the nest. So I'm pretty sure that she is the, is the mother. I'm sure she's the one that laid the egg. Uh, she's got a, a white ring around her eye, whereas the other geese don't. So I would imagine that's that's her so she's nice and easy to tell apart from the others but yeah so it's difficult to tell but there's a couple of a uh, couple of little tricks that you can use to tell so the the stockiness is uh, is definitely one aggression is another um geese tend to be somewhat somewhat more aggressive than uh, than other types of poultry not always and mine are mine are quite good i've uh, i've been with them from a young age and i i think it's partly luck as well they haven't been haven't been too aggressive but, um, but yeah, sometimes the males tend to be a little bit more on the aggressive side, apart from when there's eggs in the nest. Like you saw a moment ago, the mums, the mums come and they protect their, protect their eggs, protect their, their goslings with, uh, with great gusto. So they're, uh, they're great mums, but yeah. <laughs> they're great lawnmowers as well, as you can tell. They're nibbling away at the grass there. And this whole, this whole meadow here, it's, um, it's not quite an acre. It's a fair size, but it's not quite an acre. That is never trimmed by by myself with uh, with lawnmowers or anything or the tractor. That is all goose power. <laughs> You've heard of horsepower? Well, now it's goose power. <laughs> and uh, and this lovely tree. Look at that with the with the honeybee there right in front of my face. <laughs> this uh, this lovely cherry tree here. We've got we've got eight cherry trees here near the house, and then of course the orchards which have a few hundred in them. Um, these eight cherry trees by the house here. They're all massive. They're uh, they they were all massively big when uh, when we bought the farm originally six and a half years ago and um and yeah these these eight cherry trees here they're probably responsible for about a third of our harvest uh, a quarter a quarter to a third of our harvest uh, so we get an awful lot of cherries off of these trees here they're, uh, they're the first fruiting cherries so they uh, they give big beautiful cherries right at the beginning of the harvest which is of course where you get your money everyone's interested in paying for cherries when they're brand new on the market and um, and yeah, we get an awful lot from them, so they're uh, they're very very valuable trees here. And there's a honeybee right there, pollinating as I speak. And there he goes; it's just flown off.
Okay, so we're now back from um, from our lovely walk, and it is uh, it's just such a gorgeous day. It really is the perfect day for a lovely walk on the farm. Um, I'm going to be doing a bit of strumming in a little while, and um, yeah, before that, I thought I'd just take a little walk up and uh, and check out the uh, the vineyard. Uh, the sheep are now locked out of the vineyard as of last week because, of course, with all this lovely lovely spring weather, the uh, the rain and the sunshine, that means that all the uh, the buds on the vines are going to be coming out very shortly. I think they're probably already opened up now in the last week. So, of course, we need the, the sheep out of there. And look at the vineyard. They've done a fantastic job this year. The sheep have done an absolutely marvellous job in keeping that grass nice and trimmed. And, of course, we had to do all of our yearly pruning and you can see now all of the vines they're all pruned and they're all looking fantastic and uh, if we have a look perhaps we can see yeah so yeah you can see the buds are just opening now and uh yeah oh here's lily <laughs> hey lily and yeah of course that means that the um the grapes are going to be starting to the vines are going to be starting to grow soon they're going to have all their lovely big green shoots on them and uh, we cannot have the the sheep in here during that of course during that time because they're going to strip them if we did so although they've done a fantastic job during the uh, during the winter here during the dormant season they've kept the grasses down and kept our workload down for us now they have to go back up to their two hectare pasture and um and yeah leave the uh, leave the vines to grow and do their job and start uh, producing grapes now i'm going to head up to the um, up to the sheep barn see how the uh, the little lambs are doing as we come down to the end of the vineyard we enter the sheep pasture here it's a 2 hectare pasture it's it's quite large it's it's certainly enough for the uh, for the sheep for most of the most of the spring and summer and uh, a bit of the autumn as well and then for the whole uh, dormant months so the the end of autumn and the beginning of winter they get they get shut into the uh, into the vineyard and i can't see them typically so i'm sure they're right at the very tip top so we have to go hunt them out And normally what happens as we uh, as we come up past this big lovely fig tree here we open up into uh, into one of the uh, the the higher terraces up here We've got this beautiful view and uh, it, normally the sheep can start to see me or hear me from over there and they start to run down come on girls i can see them yeah here they come <laughs> Here they all come. We've got a stampede now. <laughs> I'm down here. Hey, it's Rosemary. Then Godfrey the ram. <laughs> Polly, some of the lambs. Hey, boys and girls, how are we? How are we all? Hey, sweetie. Oh, sweetie's my favourite. Hey, sweetie. So here's the flock. How are you all, girls and boys? There's, uh, where am I looking? Here is uh, is Florence with her little baby that was born uh, just a couple of weeks ago. If you were a regular viewer, then you would have you would have seen her her born a couple of weeks ago. Bless her heart. That's the that's the little baby there. She's a little a little ewe lamb. Bless her. <laughs> and we've got a couple of the uh, couple of the new little young ram lambs. They are doing absolutely fantastic. My hair's uh, my hair's blowing in the wind uh, up here, up in the altitudes. <laughs> we're um, we're about 100 meters higher than where the farmhouse is here. This uh, really is the tip top of our land. We're on the on the side of the Gardenia Mountains, so it really does does go up quite high on our farm. And um, yeah, we've got all these beautiful, beautiful little lambs here. Um, I'm enjoying enjoying the last the last sort of week or two with most of them now. They're all uh, going to new homes. I've got some people coming to collect them on the uh, on the weekend, I think. And um, and yeah, I'm going to miss them, but I know they're going to uh, to lovely homes. Uh, there's still there's still a few more lambs available if anyone did want um, 
did want a lamb, but uh, we've got a couple of girls, but we've got uh, a few few of the boys still still left. I'm uh, I'm probably going to keep one of the girls back myself. I think I think Annie, which is which is that little little ewe lamb over there, the furthest one, and um, yeah, they're all they're all absolutely beautiful. Look at these ones over here. Look at them standing so proud, absolutely gorgeous. There we go. There's a little jump. <laughs> So yeah, most of the uh, most of the older of the lambs, they're um, they're all around uh, just over two months old now. So they're all uh, all at weaning stage. Uh, they've been they've been sleeping in uh, in the lambing pen away from their mothers. Uh, so of course they haven't been haven't been getting their milk during the night. So that's uh, that's helped to wean them off. And then um, and then some days during the day, not today of course, you can see them all here. But some days we've shut the mothers in this field, and then there's a fence and a gate. And the baby's just on the other side, so um, so they can see their mothers, they can touch their noses to them, and everything through the fence, through the fence. But um, but yeah, they can't they can't drink the milk. So that's uh, it's sad to hear them cry when they do that, of course, and that's why I'm so soppy and I let them back in the field today. But um, of course, it is a necessary part of weaning. And uh, just making sure Godfrey isn't running behind me. <laughs> he likes to headbutt. And um, and yeah, that's uh, that's a necessary stage to them, uh, leaving their mothers, and then of course, um, of course, going to live their own lives on uh, on some other lovely farms. But yeah, such is life. <laughs> But anyway, Florence and Flora, the little lamb that was born last week, they're both doing well. Uh, so are all of the others, of course. I am going to be sad, like I said, to, to see them go to their new homes. Of course, it's necessary. Uh, you can't keep every animal that you breed out on the farm. It just wouldn't work. I'd be inundated with males, and that just really wouldn't be wouldn't work. Also, I wouldn't have any any grass left if uh, if I was feeding all those mouths every day of the year. But yeah, <laughs> but they're all doing fantastic. Um, we've had a really, really lovely week here on the farm. I know it's been a bit different this uh, this episode. It's been um, a little bit a little bit shorter than uh, than normal, I think, and it hasn't had quite so much going on. As I told you last week, my uh, my family were all in um, all in England celebrating my sister's wedding. Uh, thank you very much to all of the congratulations messages that uh, that I read to Lucy and Lloyd. They were they were really appreciated, and I passed them on to them both. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, um, yeah. So I've been doing quite a lot on uh, on my own on the farm. So uh, so sorry about that, and uh, so sorry I haven't really had enough time to to do a, a proper video this week. But yeah, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing week, and I'll see you all again next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.